hope that works, Jordan. Hey, good morning, Midtown family and friends. I am pumped to see you. Thanks for hanging out with us for the next few minutes. Uh, hey, listen, why don't you type in the chat right now where you're watching from, what you're doing, what's going on. Uh, if you need something, uh, if you want somebody to pray with you, please put that in the chats. We want to make ourselves available. We want to let you know that, listen, we are a, a group of people um, who don't have it all together, but we certainly are a group of people uh, who just want to bring love. We want to bring hope. We want to show people Jesus. And we want to, at the end of the day, our goal is to populate heaven, make the name of Jesus famous, and, and get all people closer to God. That is our, that is our end game goal. And so, um, we just want to say thanks for, thanks for hanging out with us. No, you could be doing a lot of other things right now. Um, but you know, uh, today is a, today is a, a new day in a sense. Um, I have talked to our team some and uh, talked to other people, gaining some insight and some, some wisdom on kind of different things and different directions and different ideas. And uh, today's going to be pretty simple. Um, in fact, today's going to be very simple because um, I, I am, I'm really just calling today uh, phase two. Phase two. Now, I don't really have a title per se. But if I did have a title, the title of today would be my last point. So I'm not going to tell you the title because then I'd be giving away the last point, right? Without really explaining what's going on. Um, but but in a nutshell, to 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 make things quick, as you know, as the intro, um, crazy year and a half, right? Um, crazy. Maybe, maybe if you're in the chats right now and you said, you know what? Yeah, if this has been a crazy, like weird slash scary slash um, anxiety filled, just it's been a weird year, right? So why don't you give me like a hands up, thumbs up if, if that's you. If you've had one of those, maybe to let me know that I'm not the only one um, that has felt that, that has gone through that, that has, that has walked through that. Um, but why don't you, why don't you right now in the chats, give me a, give me a thumbs up if uh, you're not happy for the crazy year, but at least, you know, you've gone through something, right? Because we've all gone through something. Nobody has, has not, um, gotten away from anything that's happened over the last year and a half, two years. But, uh, for Midtown Church, it has been one of those seasons that I finally, um, have learned that this has been a season, um, of, of phase one. Now, when, I, when we talk about when we kind of just, say the word phase. Like when we, we say phase one, phase two, sometimes um, we, we can use those in different contexts and that can be kind of like a sexy term, like, oh, well, that was phase one, but man, phase two. Well, in this context, there, there's nothing like grand about it in the sense of, man, like we can't say phase one was, was like real sexy and amazing, right? But what we can say is that when I refer to phase one, I'm talking about from uh, from about January 2021 until about, um, I don't know, probably August of, or I'm sorry, January of 2020 to August of 2021. And it has really kind of hit me over the last couple weeks. Wow, like, Man, we have gone through a lot, but when you stop and think about it, when you stop and realize, instead of focusing on all the negative, but realize all the things from the negative that maybe we've learned, been taught, um, have sought wise counsel about, maybe it's kind of like, wow, what an amazing uh, moment in the sense of that has taught me a lot. So if it's taught me a lot, then that means that there was a reason why I learned it. So what if that reason is right now, starting today, phase two, phase two. For Midtown Church, I believe that phase two starts right now. You hear me? So for all of our Midtown family and friends, I truly believe that phase two of Midtown starts right now. When we refer to phases of the moon, see, I, I've read up and, and kind of looked and studied a little bit about the moon. But when we talk about the phases of the moon, 
um, it, the, the moon goes through different phases and it goes through different phases because it kind of has to reset itself some. And there's other things when we talk about phases, it has to reset because it, it can't go on the same way and continue to be great or continue to be whole or continue to be something that's significant. If it doesn't regenerate, if it doesn't kind of go through phases after phases after phases, but what happens is when it goes through each phase, it allows itself or that organization or that thing, when each phase is complete, it can step into the next phase, which allows it to be better, which allows it to be stronger, which allows the moon to be brighter, which allows anything to become something that is greater. And greater can mean and look in different ways for different situations, different objects, different places, different people. But I, I never for, I'll never forget. I'm filming uh, today in my office. Why? Because when we first set up this office, it was a space that we created that we really didn't know what it would look like because it was hard to determine and hard to really visualize the size of what this space was. Yes, we saw the room. Yes, we saw the walls. But for whatever reason, picturing furniture and picturing uh, a chair and picturing an ottoman and a desk and all these other things, it was a, it was kind of it was tricky. It was hard to do. And and so um, when Brittany, she was the mastermind at, at putting everything together, and it, it it it's amazing. But when she was putting it together, we were at the store, and she saw and she found some pictures that are actually hanging on the wall and the pictures are facing my desk so every time i look up i see these pictures and i've been looking at them now for over almost two years in reality and and i would look at them sometimes and really not think anything and i would see them and not think anything and even when she bought them she 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 went on and she talked about how that that phrase it's just a phase how that really is a cool phrase, how that really carries a lot of weight, how it really carries something that's incredible. But it wasn't until about a month and a half ago that when I looked up one day and I saw those pictures staring back at me and the words on the pictures that are on the moon in the picture, and it says, it's just a phase. And it hit me in that moment. Okay, that has to be significant for something right now for me. That has to be significant because it struck such a stretch a chord and it struck like such a place in my heart where I was like, man, okay, what what does what does that mean? How does that apply to me today? Well, I really believe that over the last two years, it was just a phase. It was phase one of me becoming healthier. I got to get better physically healthier, but it was a phase of me becoming healthier in my mind because of all the stuff and all the junk and all the unforgiveness and all the anger and all of the bitterness and all of those things that were built up in my life that I didn't even realize until I was talking with my counselor and we were working things out. It wasn't until then that I realized, wow, I'm an unhealthy person and I can't continue to lead from an unhealthy place and lead on empty. And so I decided that that was a phase in my life that I had to learn and look back from and see, wow, okay, that was phase one. But today, this is phase two, not just of Midtown, but this is phase two of Jeff Easton. Because because what I, I didn't realize that all the anger and bitterness and unforgiveness on all those things, all the built up anxieties, all of those things were making me be, causing me to be somebody who I really wasn't, making decisions that I shouldn't make, saying things that I shouldn't say, thinking things that definitely weren't anywhere near or faith filled, acting ways that, that made me look like an idiot at times. And I realized, wow, I've got to have a different phase of my life. And so today, I believe that it's a different phase of my life. But God struck me so hard just a couple weeks ago about this is phase two of Midtown. This is phase two of Midtown. And some of you are asking, well, 
How can you, how can you have a phase two? How can you, what does that mean? Well, it, it simply means this, that for the last two years, Midtown, we've learned a lot, seen a lot, gone through a lot, had a lot of frustrating moments, had a lot of moments where things look rough and, and man, what do we do? We started off and we had these plans and they didn't go that way. We started off, we had this launch, but it, it didn't, wasn't met. But see, just because things aren't met doesn't mean those things have to come to an end. That sometimes we have to rework the things that maybe we thought we had come up with that looked like a good plan then, but see that good plan then, that that was for then. God can reconstruct and God can redesign and God can put things back together just like he has me, just like he has you. And he could put things back in place that align with the new phase of where we're at instead of worrying about what we didn't get where we were. And so today, phase two, here's where it starts. See, the Bible has a lot of scriptures and I could read a lot. But here's what the Bible says in Proverbs 29, 18. It says this, where there is no vision, the people perish. Another version of the Bible says where there is no prophetic vision, people cast off restraint. See, where people don't know, uh, where, where we don't know where we're going, people stop caring. So in reality, if we don't care and we don't, uh, and we don't see where we're going and what we're doing in Midtown, this just becomes a religious experience instead of a relationship builder. But I have realized, and I told our team and I, I've talked to our team that, that man, this isn't about just a religious experience. No, no, no. This is about building relationships with Jesus so that our relationships become so strong with him that our relationship with people becomes so strong and we don't become judgy and we aren't just Christians who who look like and sound like oh well we have it all together no we're a bunch of messed up people who are serving a great put together God that when we allow him to enter our mess that's when he becomes great and that's when we we become different Habakkuk 2 says, write what you see, write it out in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. I love this next verse because it says this vision, this vision, vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait and it doesn't lie. If it seems slow in coming, wait. If it's on its way, it will come at the right time. I believe right now that phase two of Midtown, this is, we call it phase two. You can call it relaunch. You can call it whatever. But today is it. Phase two starts today. And yeah, you know what? We've gone through some stuff. Yeah, you know what? It's been hard. It's been painful. But you know what? There's power in the weight. There's strength in the weight. There's things in the weight that we couldn't have seen, we couldn't have learned if we weren't walking through life waiting for the right moment. See, we're in a season where I do believe God is doing something. I believe God is, is up to some things. And it's not just um, by us sitting and being, and, and being you know, still and, and just kind of watching life go by sometimes that we can that we can really experience what this verse is talking about. See, in this verse, it just said that, that we have to write it out so that we can be ready on the run. Now, I don't know about you, but over the past two years, I have felt like I have been running. My mind has been running. My heart has been running. It's just been, it's felt like everything is going so fast. It feels like so many things are going on. It feels like all this stuff is happening on the run. But see, it's on the run where sometimes we can learn the most. It's on the run because it kind of proves in a sense that we're continuing to go on, but are we going to continue to go on and listen and run the right way? I'll never forget a few weeks ago, I was in my car on my way to coaching football and it was a hot day. It was probably about 94, 95 degrees. And in reality, in my mind, I didn't feel like coaching that day, to be honest with you. It was so hot. There was stuff going on. I, I was just frustrated with things. It, it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't the great day. Now, I know that some of you probably don't have those days, but I do. And, and I remember as I was on my way to football, I, I, I sat there and sometimes I listen to podcasts. Sometimes I'll call my brother. Sometimes I'll call my mom. Sometimes I'll listen to worship music, but sometimes 
And my wife hates this because she, man, she's like the car DJ. She's the best DJ on the planet. She likes music. But see, sometimes for me, I would, I, 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 I tend to do better sometimes, not all the time, when it's silent. And I'll never forget as I drove up in the parking lot, three words hit my, not head, but hit my heart. And the three words that I'm going to tell you, you're immediately going to think of a brand. You're immediately going to think maybe of a commercial. You're going to think of a, a, a something that, that goes along with this brand name that we all know, that we all have grown up with, that you all probably have sitting either in your shoe closet or in your, your, your wardrobe somewhere. But these three words hit me so hard and my mind didn't go to the brand name. My mind didn't go to the commercials. My mind didn't go to anything except for one thing. And it's something that I had to take action on, that I had to do. It had nothing to do with a, with, a, with a brand. It had nothing to do with anything except for it was a direct order that I believe from Jesus to Jeff Easton. And the three words were simply this, just do it. Now, immediately I said that some of you all thought, well, Nike, he thought of shoes, he thought of Jordans, he thought of shirts, he thought of commercials, he thought of all these things. But I'm telling you, I didn't think of one single thing having to do with, with Phil Knight or Nike or Oregon or football or ESPN or Monday night. No, 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 no. I immediately knew it was a direct order and something that I had to take action and do. I knew at that exact moment that it was something that Jeff Easton had to do. You know, when it comes with this idea of the, the phrase, just do it, um, I, I, I honestly at first, um, I heard that in my heart and then I thought, well, maybe did I hear it right? But the more and more and more I prayed and the more I thought about it that whole day, um, I just couldn't get away from this, this feeling of excitement, this feeling of, okay, like I'm ready to roll. And it's not that I wasn't ever um, done per se, but I'm so glad that God helped me work things out in my own life and, and helped me to do things the right way. And so, you know, I, I, wanted, I want to encourage everybody right now. I want you to know that no matter what you have to work out in your life, no matter what needs to not necessarily maybe always be fixed, but something that it might be something small that needs to be tweaked. Man, just tweak that one thing. Do it so that your life can be moved in such a better way than ever before. All it takes sometimes is one little pivot, one little turn, one little release, just something that can make your life um, new or something that you maybe never have had before. See, the, the, God's greatest work of faith um, in the Bible, in the world, and on the earth was not when Noah or Moses or, or Abraham and, and all those guys uh, were kicking it around. No, no, no. See, the Bible says that greater works we will see. So I believe that not only in this, in this phase two, but I believe so, so heavy in my heart, in my mind, in, in, in just this, um, this new kind of way of thinking, for me especially, it's that, yes, those things were great back then, but God said that greater things will still yet and still have yet to be seen and done. And so I believe that that's, that's on us. That's what we're supposed to really be looking for and supposed to be doing. I believe God wants to do something um, and, and make something happen in 2021, 20, 2022, 20, 2023 um, that the face of this planet has never seen before. Now, I don't know exactly what that is. I can't pretend to, to say, oh, well, it's going to be this or it's going to be that or it's going to be done this way. No, but I really do believe that my faith has been strengthened. The truth is some people put in other people's heads, well, you know, you should never lose faith. Well, well here's the thing. Just because your faith has gone down doesn't mean that your faith is lost. That's not it at all. That's not it at all. I want to give you just three things on this idea of, of phase two, where we're going. And my last point is what's going to be my title. My last point are the words for Midtown right now. And the words for where I believe we're going and what we're going to be doing and how we're going to be doing it. 
God's still giving me all these ideas. God's still laying some things out and God's still uh, working on, on me and, and making sure that I hear him clearly. But the first thing that in order, in, not in order, but the first thing in phase two that, that we will be doing is this, and that I think in our own personal lives we have to do. The first point is this, write it, don't just say it. See, there's a difference between saying something and actually having enough faith or having enough belief or having just the mindset to actually write that thing down. See, the Bible says, write it down and make it plain. That's what I love about Midtown and what we are going to do and what we are going to strive for is that we are going to write down the things that God tells us. We're going to write it down and we're going to make it simple. We're going to make it plain because it doesn't just, uh, it doesn't, it isn't just for one group of person or one group of people. It isn't just for these type of people. No, it's got to be plain enough so that God's message, God's words, God's love, God's hope, everything about Jesus, make it plain because he's not difficult. We make him too difficult, and it's my responsibility, it's our responsibility, I really believe, to make the name of Jesus famous, not by a bunch of words that are big, not by a bunch of doctorates that you have to have, not by a bunch of money that, that maybe you do or don't have, not by any of that, but we just need to make the name of Jesus famous with love, with hope, with faith. And knowing that, yes, you know what? Life may stink. Life is hard. But I truly think that when we make and we decide in our life, if we're going to write some things down that he's telling us, he looks at it and says, okay, they believed it enough to hear it. Now they're believing it enough to write it down. And when they write it down, they're going to remember it in times when things look like hell, when it looks like everything else is done. They still believe it that much. Write it. Don't just say it. God has told me um, quite a few things over the last week or so to write down, and I have it written down on my desk that I'm believing God for. I'm believing for some crazy things. You know, Mike Todd, pastor in Oklahoma, just came out with a book called Crazy Faith, and I have listened to his sermon series so many times about that, and I've heard him, I've heard him speak um, in different places and different uh, atmospheres about this idea of crazy faith. And one thing that I love about Mike Todd is the fact that he's just a real person who has real crazy faith. And he says this, this phrase, it's crazy until it happens. Well, I believe that can be attached to Midtown because people might think that we're crazy, but see what they don't see is God happening and doing something. People might think we're, we're nuts, but, but we know what God told us. And so I'm here for it. I'm all for it. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to, to, to do this thing big. The second thing in phase two of this of, of, of Midtown that we're going to continue to do, but I'm asking God to help us do it. And I want to ask you, maybe this is your first time watching. I want to say this, first of all, you don't have to give ever a certain amount to God in order to capture his attention for him to love you more. No, see, God's love is, is an unconditional love. It's not attached to a price tag. It's not attached to anything that you can do. His, his love is unconditional, meaning he's always going to love you no matter what, no matter how far, no matter how hard we try to do things or go away or want him to go. No, no, no. It's an unconditional type love, meaning it's always there, always available, and always ready for us. But one thing I do believe in that I'm asking God in, in this phase two is this. God, help us to give more. See, I, I've heard it said, and some of us have, have heard it said that, uh, you know, we, we give to get. No, 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 no. We give to give. Because if we're just constantly having the mindset and the, and the, and the frame of mind of, well, I'm just going to give so that I can get something. That's, the to that's, that's a totally wrong idea. That's not what giving is. Giving comes from a place of joy. Giving comes from a place of saying, you know what? I see a need. I want to help meet that need. And it's not about getting anything in return. That's in fact called manipulation. And see, that's not who we want to be. That's not who God wants us to be. And that's who, not Je that's not who Jesus is. I, I, God told me this, this past week because I was thinking about the giving aspect and, and just, you know, Quite honestly, because we didn't raise our launch budget, there's times where just the, the Jeff side comes up in me and says, "Okay, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be bold in my giving." 
but I believe God spoke to me and said, Jeff, giving isn't about being bold. It's about having the right heart. Because if we just attach being bold to giving because that's how we feel in the moment, then what we're saying is giving is just based on our feeling. When in reality, giving should be how we live and it should be the heart and who we have and what we have. Giving is a heart thing, not a bold thing. Giving isn't about getting something. Giving is just simply giving to give. And so in phase two, we're giving. We're giving. I have about three or four places and people written down that God has spoken to on my heart that I'm believing that we're going to raise and that we're going to give a certain amount. Why? Because I believe that when we give, that is what the heart of God beats for. And we want to do nothing but please the heart of God. And then he'll do whatever he wants to do. But we want to capture the attention of God and please his heart. And let him know that, yes, you know what? We don't have a million dollars in the bank, but we're still going to give. Why? Because that is what we have been asked to do. And that's what we will do because giving comes from a place of sacrifice. Giving comes from a place of saying, you know what? I may not have it, but here's what I'm going to do because I believe that God's good enough that when I give from the right heart, everything else will fall into place. Everything else will fall into place. And point number three is this. And these are the words for Midtown right now. Make space. Make space. I'm here to tell you this, that we at Midtown, we are going to make space for grace. We are going to make space for love. We are going to make space for acceptance. We're going to make space for, for falls. We're going to make space for, for everything and anything. Why? Because Jesus had made space for you and he has made space for me. We're going to make space so the city of St. Louis and the people in it know and understand That we are not a bunch of people who feel like we're up on a high rocker. No, in fact, we are a bunch of people who have been forgiven time and time and time and time again. And it's because he has made space for grace. He has made space for forgiveness. He has made space for love. Even when we turned our back, even when we doubted, even when we didn't do the right things, he has still made a space for us. There's so many stories in the Bible where Jesus comes in contact with people and he connects with different people and he talks to different people. But every single story, no matter the issue, the problem, the place, the person's background, no matter what's going on all around him, see the one thing that happens in all of these stories is that Jesus walks up on the scene and he changes the scene because he has made space for the person. Jesus is here to make space for you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where we've, where where our head has been. It doesn't matter. Let's make space for him and he will make space for us. I love this analogy I heard this week that sometimes we have a, a small chair and we have a big chair and in the big chair, it looks like the adult chair. The small chair is, is the, the children's chair or the child's chair. And it's small and it's probably not the most comfortable. But see, what I love is the fact that a lot of times as humans, we will, we will pick the space that looks the best. But in reality, that other chair, the small chair, the, the quote, child's chair, the manufacturer talks about how the, 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 the manufacturer built it in such a way that it can withhold and it can, it can stand hundreds and hundreds of pounds. But see, so many times in life, we will choose the big chair because it looks like the right thing. In reality, sometimes what doesn't always look the best isn't maybe the best thing for us. That there is a space that Jesus is making for us that yes, we would say we choose this as humans, but what if God is asking us to choose the thing that doesn't look maybe the right or maybe what the world would say is great or maybe what the world would say is amazing? See, Jesus is making space for us every single day that we wake up. He's making space for us so that we can represent him in a way that lets other people know that yes, their past may have happened, but their future can be something that they didn't even believe could take place. 
See, Jesus makes a space for us when we wake up every single day. Why? Because we are a bunch of imperfect people who mess up, who say stupid things, who act crazy ways, who think dumb stuff a lot of the time. But it's the passion that he has for us that is going to be the passion that Midtown carries. And it's going to be the passion and it's going to be the love and it's going to be the the same thing that God is pouring into us. That it's our duty, it's our responsibility, and it should be something that we want to do on a daily basis to give and represent him to other people. I love the fact that God has been so forgiving to me because if it wasn't for him, I don't know where I'd be. But here's what I want to do. Before we go on, I just want to simply ask you this. Will you be a part and do you want to just go with us into this phase two of what I believe God is setting up for us in a way that we had to go through phase one. But remember, phases happen because in different phases is what caused the next phase to take place. So looking back now, yes, it hasn't really always been fun. It wasn't always necessarily, you know, pretty. But I'm believing that phase two is going to be a space that God's going to make. That if we first make it for him and we make space for others, in Jesus' name, I believe something incredible can take place if we will make the, make the space. Listen, I love you today. Here's what I want to do. I want you right now, if you say, you know what, Jeff, I want to be a part of that. I want to, I want to maybe start new on a fresh start. I'm, I'm ready to change my mindset. Jeff, I want you to pray for me. Anything that you need today, I want you to text FRESH to the number on your screen right now. And here's what's going to happen. We're just going to pray for you. We're going to let you know that we're walking through life with you. We're no better. We have nothing great. We just want to give you Jesus and make space for you to understand that your future is is and can be incredible god thank you so much right now lord i pray god that you would as you continue god to take us into the next phase of what and who midtown is god that you would just expand our territory god that you would anoint us to think the right things to pray the right things to say the right things to do the right things god that we can represent you to this world to this city to this to this entire globe in a way, God, that people will understand that you really are an amazing, life-giving, life-give, uh, life-giving, chance-giving God. Lord, I thank you for today. I praise you. And I thank you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I love you. I'm thankful for you. And I can't wait to see all that God has in store for your life in phase two of Midtown. Because we are gonna make space. Have a great day. We'll see you next week.